give glory to God today. He has given us a new face of life. But we'll have to live this life according to him, according to his direction, obeying him, doing the things that are pleasing in his sight. In that way, it will be well with us every day. Disobedience brings problems. Today we are going to read Numbers chapter 14. Numbers 14, verse 25. Numbers 14, 25. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow, turn and move out into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. The topic of this message is sin changes destiny. Read the entire chapter, you find the story of the children of Israel that come out of Egypt, heading towards Canaan. And Moses said, go and spy out the land. Go and look at what the land looks like. So we know the direction to enter from and how things will be when we get there. The spies that when they came back and gave a very horrible report, 10 of them, that yes, the land is flowing with milk and honey. They even brought back fruits from the land, beautiful fruits. But they did say something. Giants live there. We look like grasshoppers before them. They look like every kind of giant thing that we cannot stand. So let's not go. And the people believed them. That was the problem. Only two people, Joshua and Caleb. Joshua, the servant of Moses. Caleb, the leader of the tribe of Judah, said, no, because God had said, we'll get this land. That is exactly what will happen. But no, 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 no. Everybody revolted. They said, no, we cannot go. Moses, you want us to go and perish. They said all manner of things. God got annoyed. He even wanted to kill all of them on the spot. But Moses intervened, and God said, okay, no problem. But nobody said, your destiny has changed. You were supposed to get there in the next two weeks but it's going to take you 40 years inside this wilderness. The destiny had changed. The time of two weeks had become a time of 40 years. The persons that should have gone into Canaan, they all died in the wilderness, except Joshua and Caleb. The rest of them, they died in the wilderness. It is their children and grandchildren that eventually got into Canaan after 40 years, the change in destiny. That thing that you are doing has a consequence. We need to realize that sin has consequence. When you commit sin, there is a consequence to it. There is something that will come as a result of it, and that something is not something good. Thank God for Jesus that he died. Thank God for Jesus that he shed his blood on the cross, that we can be redeemed from sin and be taken away from the powers of sin. That sin shall no longer have dominion over us. But do we choose to sin? Yes, we do. But do we even realize that sin has its consequences? We don't seem to realize it. You know what the scripture says? It says, I'll forgive their sins, but I'll punish them for what they do. And somebody would say, okay, ah, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. So if I sin, there is no consequence to it. But he said, books will be opened for every single person. What will be found in your book? the sins you committed after you were born again, or were the sins born again? The things that you do against God after you are born again, are those things born again also? So God won't mind. God does mind, and it has consequences. And well, that's for eternity, but for now, destinies are changing. Some of us are living the kind of lives that we are not supposed to have lived. Some people end up in the wilderness of life that they have created for themselves because of sin. When you commit sin, there is a problem, except there is an immediate forgiveness. And even where there is an immediate forgiveness, there is chastisement for sin, Hebrews chapter 12. That's in the New Testament. I said, if God loves you, he will punish you for your sins. Is it for the son that is not chastised is a bastard, not a son. Are you a bastard? If you are a bastard, then God has no business with you. You can live anyhow you like. But if you are a son, there is discipline for sin. Be careful how you live your life. Otherwise, you live on to a changed destiny. Forty years in the wilderness. A journey of two weeks had become a journey of 40 years. 
And the journey of two weeks that they would have entered into the land flowing with milk and honey, they ended in the desert. Nobody entered the land flowing with milk and honey. How is your life? Now, this is question time. We have to question ourselves. How is my life? What are the things that are happening in my life? Are they the things that should happen today? Some of us will have an idea. This is not the pattern that my life was taking at the beginning. Why is it going in this direction today? Why are things going the way they are going today? What is wrong with my life? There is something that is at issue here. I have to check. Where did I go wrong? You know what it says in the book of Revelation? Go back to where you had defaulted. Go back to that point from where you missed it. Don't sit down and assume that everything is right and things will work themselves out. Sin does not work itself out. It requires true repentance. And is it repentance if I repent in the morning and get back to the same thing in the evening and repent again the next morning and get back? Shall we continue in sin because there is grace? Grace does not cover sin. Grace allows God to see you and listen to you in spite of your sin. But that grace does not say you have not sinned. He said you have sinned, but allows God to see you. So when God has seen you, what do you do? The true person turns away from that sin when he recognizes it as sin. If you recognize your own as sin, turn around from it. There is punishment. There is consequence. Destinies change. Don't let your destiny go in the direction that you don't like. If you have noticed that your destiny has gone in the wrong direction, go back to the place from which you fell. Change things. Turn things around. What do I mean, turn things around? Let there be true repentance. Get back to God. He's merciful and is faithful and just. And he will forgive us all of our iniquities if we indeed repent. It is time for us to repent. Repent of everything that is at enmity against God that in his mercy he might restore your destiny and bring you back to whom you should have been and bring back the good things of your life. May it happen for you today, Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone that comes back. Even as the prodigal was accepted, his destiny was restored, even beyond what he expected. Receive all of us that turn back to you and restore our destinies again. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.